This is the second video in my mini series about factory resetting and reinstalling a Windows 10 PC. If you are new here, hit subscribe for weekly pro tech tips and in-depth reviews. I usually do this about once a year to give my tech life a clean reset and make my PC feel brand new again. If you missed the first episode in this series, this episode builds upon that, so I will link it up here, but also down below in the description. All you have to do is hit the title on mobile below this YouTube YouTube video to see all the links for references. Now with all of that said, let's go ahead and pick it up where we left off on the last video. Today we are actually going through the process of resetting the PC and reinstalling Windows 10. You have already prepped your PC in the last episode, so I'm going to assume that you already followed that one and are ready for step two. If you are starting here and you haven't seen that episode yet, I strongly advise watching the first episode first because I did give some really good pro tips in terms of backing up and prepping drivers and applications, as well as a really cool command line tip. So definitely check it out. So go ahead and power off your PC and plug in your new Windows 10 installation media flash drive. Your intention is to boot up off of this flash drive, which will prompt the installation. So number one, power on your PC now that it's ready to go and the flash drive is plugged in. Your PC may try to automatically just boot into your current Windows 10 install. And if that is the case, you can change which drive it tries to boot off of first before trying the other ones. Now you may need to change the boot order in your BIOS or your UFI settings, which is kind of like where all of your PC tower settings lie. So press F2 or F10 or whatever the F number is when you are prompted to do so and change those settings and hit save. Now, if you're looking for that prompt, usually this is found whenever you first start up your computer and you see your motherboard's logo. Like mine is Republic of Gamers, so that's the logo that I see. When you open up your UFI or your BIOS, find a menu for boot and change boot option number one to the new flash drive. You can then disable or override any other ones that try to take priority for booting, save and boot up. Every manufacturer has a different looking BIOS or UFI menu, so yours may not look like mine. And if that's the case, just look for some kind of boot setup option. Number two, the flash drive will toss you into the regular Windows 10 installation process. It's going to first ask for your language and your keyboard format. Once you have those set, click next and install now. You can then enter your product key or you can skip that and do it later. I skipped it. Then you choose your Windows 10 version. So I have Windows 10 Pro, so that's what I chose. You will need to accept the Microsoft terms of use and then choose either upgrade or custom install. I chose custom. Number three, this pops you into a menu that shows all of your disk partitions. Now this one might show multiple partitions, even if you only have one physical drive actually installed on your computer. Mine shows two because I was lazy and I didn't remove my games drive which was that Fire CUDA M.2 MVME that you saw installed in the last video on my motherboard. There's also a second one, the Crucial NVME. That's the one that I'm going to be installing Windows on. So if you did not follow those directions about unplugging all of your additional drives in the last video, where I said to unplug all of your data drives except for the one for Windows, and you have more than one drive installed, just make absolutely sure you are formatting drives that have nothing important on them and make absolutely sure you choose the correct drive to install Windows 10 on. Number five, in here, I basically just deleted all of the partitions that I didn't need anymore, which was all of them because there was nothing on them except for my old Windows 10 install. I then formatted the main drive that will be the new Windows 10 drive. Number six, this will then start installing Windows 10 and getting your files ready. Now this part may take some time, so just sit back, get yourself a coffee, wait it out. But the nice part is, if you followed my directions in the last episode, you have left your ethernet unplugged or your Wi-Fi connection adapter unplugged. So it's not going to connect to the internet and search for anything to download yet. So it shouldn't take too outrageously long you're also installing Windows 10 from a local flash drive, so there's no big files that need to be downloaded in order to install Windows 10. Don't worry about updates at this moment. We can worry about that later. So while you are waiting for this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more educational tech content just like this. See what I did there? <laughs> Number 
All right, we're back with number seven. So this is a very important menu and one of the reasons why I always recommend doing a fresh install. I always just do the custom fresh install, not a recovery or a restore and keep files, which you can do, but I prefer a fresh install every time. See, this menu lets you choose to disable Cortana right after this menu and all of these privacy invasive settings before you even connect to the internet for the first time. So take your time on this menu and disable all the things. Don't just skip through real quick because you could be leaving on privacy invasive settings. You can turn all of those things off and if you need anything connected or if you need to share any data, you can always do that later. All right, we're on to number eight. Since the computer has no connection to the internet, it's also going to ask you to plug in internet or to set up a Microsoft account. Since you aren't connected, if you try to set up a Microsoft account, it's going to throw up an error and say it can't connect, so it can't connect to your Microsoft account. The alternative is to create a local account. And yes, you can still do this in 2021. Unless you want to use a Microsoft account, you can skip this setting and just create that local login that has absolutely no link to the internet and no link to a Microsoft account if you have one. Now, logging into your computer using a Microsoft account does give you less privacy. So I always recommend a local account unless you need for some reason to be connected, for everything to be connected to your Microsoft account. Like if you use paid Microsoft services and apps and you want access to those, if you have a network profile that you need access to or work requires it, or you just want profile info stored up in the cloud, those are all justifiable reasons, just not something that I need and not something that I recommend. So I just do a local account. Microsoft may try to force you into creating or using your Microsoft account, no matter whether you're watching this now in May of 2021, or if you're watching this in November of 2022, Microsoft may try to force you into creating a Microsoft account. They really want you to do that. But if you aren't connected to the internet, you can skip that option and just create a local one. And this is exactly what I did. This is another case where taking your time and not just clicking next, 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 will serve you a lot better. And we're on to number nine. Once you have created your account to log in, set up a lock screen and Windows 10 will tell you that it's getting everything ready. So you are almost done. Number 10, that's it. <laughs> you should see the system boot into Windows 10 and allow you to log into your new local account or your Microsoft account if you chose to plug in your internet. If you have chosen to connect to the internet for that Microsoft account, it will ask you to log into that account instead of a local account. Then you should see your desktop and you are ready for the last video in this series. And number 11 is basically just congratulations, you've reinstalled Windows. See how quick and painless that was? It is way faster whenever you aren't connected to the internet and it gets you back into the desktop without any issues. Do you have any tips for reinstalling Windows 10? Leave them down in the comments below. Thanks again to my s'mores for subscribing and for watching. I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you soon with part three. Bye y'all.